Today we're going to break down a basic Angular project, and I want to take you from no Angular knowledge to slightly more than no Angular knowledge. Now, I'm going to assume you have some JavaScript and or TypeScript knowledge. Um, we're not going to go that basic. Ba we're not going to get too basic into the actual language. What we want to focus on is Angular itself and what the project looks like so you can look at one and understand what's going on. So we're going to start with installing Node. You have to have Node first off to be able to do anything. No matter what operating system you have, you can always get Node from the Node.js website. So you can come here, download the current long-term support or the newest one. Um, all you have to do is click on this, download it and install. If you're on a Mac, we can install it right from the command line using uh, brew. So we'll do brew install node. Once we're installed, we can check our node version and node also comes with NPM. If you're not sure what NPM stands for, it's a pa it's node package manager. Um, you're going to use NPM in your project itself. So we have node, we have NPM. Now we want to install the Angular CLI. The Angular CLI, CLI just stands for command line interface and it's what you're going to use to add components and other elements to your Angular project. You really want to do it this way. You don't want to do it manually through your IDE. So to install that, we're just going to go npm install dash g. That means global and the Angular CLI. Now, once we have the Angular CLI installed, we can create our first application. So I'm in a folder here I called Angular. We're going to create a new app. So ng stands, it, it stands for Angular. Um, ng is the command you're going to use to run any Angular commands. So uh, we're going to do ng new. This is going to create a new application. And we're going to call it, we're going to call it basic app. So we have our application installed. It's going to put it into a new folder. We called it basic app. We will cd into that. And here is our Angular application. So let's go ahead and open it up in Visual Studio Code. Now, this is our basic Angular app as it's initially installed. So Angular is going to, or Visual Studio Code is going to see that we're running Angular. It's going to ask us if we want to install the Angular um, extension, which we do. And we're going to go through the basic structure of this application. So the tsconfig.json, starting out, you don't really need to do anything with this. Um, it has a couple of it has a couple of preferences, but for now, you really don't have to worry about that. Uh, we're also going to have our package.json. Primarily, you're also not going to have to worry about this. You can install. Um, packages using this, but most of the time you're going to do that using the command line. You're not generally going to edit your package.json. So we're not really going to worry about that one either. Just know that this is where all of your third party libraries lie and all of your um, primary, primary, primary libraries are installed. So if you ever need to change a version of it or anything like that, but let's say you do want to add a third party library. The easiest way to do that is really going to be from the command line. You're going to do that by either running N npm install or for things that are built into the Angular CAI, you might do ng add. In this case, we're going to, I'm going to have to run sudo. You probably, you almost certainly won't have to. Um, I'm going to do this to add the Angular material that these are, um, design components uh, built by Google, which is why they're in the Angular CLI. So if I add this, now that this is done installing, if we come back in here, we are going to see Angular material has been added here. You didn't know it, but it wasn't there before. If you rewind, you'll see it wasn't there. Um, but this is kind of your, this is your list of all the libraries that are installed and you can do whatever you need to it with them from there. But moving on from that, uh, we are going to look in our source folder and in here we're going to see two folders. We're going to see an app folder and an assets folder. Your assets folder, a lot of times you may put a folder in here. We'll call it images and whatever images we have for our app will store in there. 
Uh, you also might put some CSS files in there. For the application itself, this app.module is your main component for the app. It's like the base of the application itself. Now, by default, when your app comes, if you look at the app component.html file, you're going to see some startup code in here. This basically just says, hey, Angular's great. That's just placeholder. We can take all that out. Now, what you're really going to see in here is your router outlet. What that means is that when your application reads the URL that you're at, it's going to read what page it's supposed to display, and it's going to display it within this. It does that all on its own. There's nothing you really have to do here. A lot of times this is going to stay empty. The other piece that we have is our routing. So routing is how your application knows which component to load based off of the URL that you're at. So right now, there's no real routes in here because we only have one component. There's only one place it can go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a component so we can see what that routing looks like. So what we're going to do, we're going to do ng-generate. Generate is when you have to generate maybe a service or a test or a component, a wide number of things. So we'll do ng-generate component, and we're just going to call it home. We created our home component. What we're going to see in here is a new folder with our home component. Now, every component has four files to it. You have your HTML file you have your spec, which is generally used for testing, you have your TS, which TS just stands for TypeScript, all the logic of the page is going to live back here, and then you have a .css file for any styling that is specific to that page. Right now, all we want to do is make it so that when you come here to the app, it's going to route you to that home component. So all of our routes is going to, are going to live within this array. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add a new one. And there's going to be two parts to this. So part one is the path. Now, because we are, we're just going to do star star and we're going to do a redirect to blank. What this is saying is if you can't find the component you're looking for based on the URL, go here. So now we have to tell it what is at no URL. So for that, we're going to add another path. And this one will give it the path of blank. Instead of a redirect, we're going to tell it which component to load. So we'll call components home components. Now, you might have seen something that just happened there this line just appeared when I did that. Any library or component used on a page, you're going to have to import it at the top of it. So anytime you go to a, a TypeScript pay, page, you're going to look up at the top, you'll see all your imports for that. So if we go to our app component, we can see all we're pulling in is Angular Core. Now, in our routing, because we're referencing our home component, it needs to know what that is, so we're going to import it. So let's give it a second component, and we'll call this, we'll just call this second page to make it easy. So now we have two components, a home component and a second page component. So let's go ahead and just add another path here so we can see what that looks like. So we'll use a path, and let's say this is your profile page, which would have been smarter had I named that second component profile instead of second page. But alas, here we are. So it's going to automatically detect when I'm selecting that component, and it's going to auto import it for me so I don't have to write that up there. So now we have two pages within our app that load two different components. So let's go ahead and just test out what we have thus far. So to run your application locally, you're just going to do ng serve. So now that this is loading or this is serving our application locally, I can open up this URL and we can see our application. If you go to localhost colon 4200, that's where Angular defaults to serve your application. Now, 
You see it's saying home. No, I don't want you Bing. Um, now you see it's saying home works. So where is that text coming from? Well, let's go back and look at our application. Now by default, no path, which is what we have here, loads the home component. So if I look at my home component HTML, it says home works. All the components when you add them, default with the text, whatever works. So let's go ahead and change this text. Now this is one nice thing about Angular, is it's gonna reload automatically every time we make a change and save it. So if I have this here, I'll move this over a little bit so I can see it, whoops. And we'll change it to Now when I save it, it's gonna automatically recompile and show us our new page. Now you can see here, it's changed to text change. So if we go back to our routing and we add slash profile onto our URL, we should see the second page component. Second page works. This is how we get content onto the page from our Angular application. Our routes tell it which component to load based off of which route we're at. Now you can have components within components, you can call components from one another, there's a lot of stuff you can do in here. Right now we're just focusing on the basics. So let's talk about displaying data. Let's go back to our home page and we have our HTML page here with text change and we have our TypeScript file behind it. So let's go ahead and create a variable in here and we'll call it times clicked. Now, because I told this it was equal to zero, it's gonna infer a type here, but we can also tell it what type it is. We can tell it that this is a number. And so it will know that it can only do things numbers can do. Now, by saying it's equal to zero, it also infers that type and it will still restrict us the same way, but it's a good habit to get into to tell it what type of variable it is. So times clicked equals zero. So if we go to our home component and we want to display data from the back end, we're going to use double curly quotes, curly brackets, and we'll call it times clicked. So now if I save this and we see this zero there, Go away. So let's make some functionality. Let's add a button. Now, now if this was regular JavaScript, we might do something like on click, but since this is Angular, anytime we want to capture an event, we're going to use these brackets and you can see all the events that we have to work with. So in this case, we're going to use click. Now on click, we're going to call a method that we're going to create on the back end increase number now see it's getting a little squiggly line because it detects hey this method you want to call it doesn't exist so let's go ahead and create it now when this is called we're gonna call times clicked plus plus which basically just adds one to that if you're not if you didn't know that. So now let's go ahead and save all and let's go back to our page. So we have our number. Every time I click this, it is incrementing that number on the back end and we're seeing the change right on the front end. So this is the great thing about Angular is you have this update that goes back and forth between the front end and the back end so we get immediate changes because the binding is two ways what does binding mean binding just means that i have a value here and on the front end on the front page it is bound to that value so every time that value changes i get it on the front end so let's go ahead and look at one more item let's take this times clicked out of here and in its place Now we'll tell it that this is an array of numbers 
and it starts as an empty array. So now we have this array of numbers. So we have our times clicked to know how many, how many times it's been clicked. But let's go ahead and create a local variable And then let's add that local variable to our click numbers array. So we have our array back here. How are we going to display that? We have multiple actions or functionality that we can add to a page using Angular. One of them is ng4. And what this does is allows us to loop through an array and it's going to whatever, let's call this a template, whatever template you have ng4 inside of, it's gonna repeat that template. So we say let n of, and then we will reference our array here, let n of click numbers, then we can access the elements of that array. And so remember we use double curly brackets for this, and we'll just put n. Oh, my squiggly line here, I need an asterisk in front of that. All right, now it recognizes it as an Angular command. So now, if we save this, and we come back to our home page, you can see each time I click this, it's incrementing that number and adding that element to the array. So we get this functionality that can happen on the front end and then we can pass it back to the back end. So I hope that gave you a basic understanding of what an Angular application looks like and how to navigate it. Now there's a lot more that can happen. You would probably have a services folder somewhere. You would probably have entities. You can create modules, which are basically just a folder that contain a bunch of components within them. The benefit to that is you can lazy load them in the navigation, uh, but they can get a lot more complex. In fact, you might see an entire clean architecture structure within the application itself. If you have questions about what that is, I'll put a link here to explain what clean architecture is in three minutes. But hopefully that gave you an overview. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below.